Are you a wife and a student mom and you're wondering how you are going to balance the two roles effectively? I'm going to tell you something that will interest you. Do you know that the beauty of motherhood is that you're not going to pressurize yourself into doing it exactly the way another person has done it? This is one thing I want to take out of today's video. My name is Sandra Ezek and I am your Marie Foundation Coach. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to strike a balance between being a wife and a student's mom. The first thing I need to tell you is, you need to decide the feeding method you will use for your child. Yes, either you're going to do exclusive breastfeeding or not. Some people opt for exclusive breastfeeding. Like I said in this scenario, you don't have to pressure yourself into doing it the way Mrs. A has done it. So you make your decision based on your circumstances. Yes, you have to do that. I didn't do it for once. I tried doing it for a week and I, I, you know, I stopped because I couldn't cope because I was a student. From the series we've been doing so far, you know, we started from how to cope as a married student, how to be pregnant, and now how to be a wife and also a student's mom. You know, I said that this is like a chronicles, you know, chronicles of what happened to me as a married student. Establishing the feeding method you will use to feed your child will help you. Like I said, I tried it for a week or so, I didn't cope. I had to run. Yes, I didn't cope. I am not here to tell you that I did exclusive breastfeeding when I did not. So you check yourself if it is what you can do. But remember, if you are opting for exclusive breastfeeding, what it means is that you are going to get a breast pump. When you get a breast pump, it also means that what we discussed in the first series, how to be a married student will come to play. That is having a refrigerator. Because if you are you know, using a breast pump, it means that you are going to be pumping your breast milk, yes, into maybe a feeding bottle, but you have to put it in the fridge. You don't have to keep it outside the fridge. Have you seen the importance of having a fridge? But like I said, if you know you cannot be, please do not pressurize yourself into doing that. Another thing you need to do is to get a good support system. Yes, a good support system is very important. You cannot do it all by yourself. You are a student. Aside from being a student, you are a new mom. So you will not say, I am a superwoman. I am a strong woman. I did not feel, I did not, I was not sick. I was very strong all through my pregnancy. For that reason, I don't need anybody. No, you need somebody. I also said that I had a help when I was in school. If you don't have a help, you still need somebody. Now you have your baby. You can, you know, your mom can come. In my own case too, my mom was around. So your mom can be there for you. Your sister-in-law can be there for you. A good family friend can be there for you. And also your husband will also be there for you. Yes, I could remember those days that my husband, he was always, almost in the school. Because, you know, this is something that both of us have not done before. We are, you know, we are trying to help ourselves. So you need a good support system. Please don't force yourself. Don't say, I am very strong. I will do it all by myself. Please don't do that. You're going to hurt yourself. You can get sick. And you know, you are already a student. If you get sick, it's going to be a problem. Another thing you need to do is to plan ahead in order to avoid pity. What do I mean? Planning ahead means as much as you have a good support system, remember, these people will leave you one day. Yes, they will go back to their houses. In my place, we call it Omugo. People that come for Omugo, sometimes it's one month, sometimes it's, some people even come and stay for three weeks, some people stay for two months. It depends. Yes, all families are not the same. Yes, I must tell you that. You don't have to do it like the other person has done it. It might not favor you. Yes, the circumstances of their family might be different from your own family. So don't say, I must do it the way this person has done her own. So you have to plan ahead because you know that these people will go one day after, stay. even if they stay for one year, they will eventually leave. So what do you have to do? You have to plan yourself. You now have to decide as a student, am I going to look for a daycare close to my school to take my child? Yes, you have to ask yourself that question and you have to discuss with your husband. It's not a decision that you take alone. By the time my support system leaves me, what am I going to do? You don't have to carry pity. You don't want a situation where when they have left you and you're going to school, you back your child, you know, and as you're coming, they say, hey, yeah, ha, how is she coping? Ha, how is she doing it? Ha, it's not easy to be a student and the mother, you don't need that. When you plan ahead, you don't need that. You avoid things like that. Yes, yeah, because if you are married as a student, you might get pregnant. You might have a child in school. 
So you don't have to, you know, leave yourself and relax and say, eh, I have people around me now. And you forget the fact that they will leave you one day. They will leave, no matter how long they stay. They will still go back to your houses. So you have to plan ahead so that even when they leave, the thing will not shake you. Another thing you need to do is communication. You, if you notice, I've kept talking about communication. Communication is very important. Communication is the lifeblood of every relationship. You cannot rule communication out. The communication you have with your husband will help to strengthen your bond. Don't say because you have a child now and you ignore your husband. And at this point, I want to correct something. You know, usually when a woman gives birth, it doesn't matter whether you are a student or not, she tends to focus her attention on the baby. I am saying this because it also happens to me. You know, sometimes you do it subconsciously. You know, you don't know, you just do it. And sometimes too, the advice you receive, that is why I said, you don't have to take advice from everybody. I mentioned it in one of the series, you have to navigate as a pregnant student. Maybe I'll put the link up there so that you go and watch it. It is not every advice that you take. Yes, you don't have to. Because some people will take you, hey, don't go close to your husband though. I think that's an archaic thinking. Yes, for me it's an archaic. Don't go, don't get too close to your husband though. You might get pregnant again. No, not at all. That is the time you have to bond with your husband. He should be part of the training process. Because, you know, when you are nursing a baby, your husband should also be part of that nursing. Don't take the responsibility alone. Don't say, eh, I'm the mother, I'm the one. No, 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 no. Gone are the days when people think like that. And remember, it's your first child. You people are still learning yourself, even though you have a child. So the communication will bridge the gap between what your husband is supposed to know and what he already knows. I hope you understand what I'm saying. There are things your husband knows as a husband. Yes, now you have a baby. There are things he should know as a father. Now he has graduated from being a husband to a father. Can't you see? You need that communication. Don't leave him. Don't abandon because I call it abandonment because some people will tell you, eh, even though, you know, you people will not have separate rooms. There are so many, so many things that people tell you when you have a newborn baby. But please, whatever that is suitable for your family is what you will do. Don't take advice from people that you know that when you implement that advice, it will not go well with your family. Please, I am begging you. Another thing that will help you to really balance, you know, being a wife and a, a, a student mom is to read ahead. My sweetheart, you know you went to the university in the first place to acquire an education. Please don't forget that. Your bundle of joy should not be a reason why you should come out with bad grace. No, it should not. It should even add, yes, it will add to your reason for having good grace. I am telling you the truth. Like in my own case, I had my baby and I went back to write my final year exam. Just picture that scenario. I did it. But like I said, you will not use my situation to, you know, to, to, to compare with your own situation. It doesn't work like that. So whatever you know that is okay for you is what you are going to do. Like I said, you have to read ahead of time. So what did I do? Because I knew that I was going to write exam as soon as I go back to school, I already know the courses I'm going to write and when I'm going to write those courses. So what I did was the courses that I'm supposed to write like today, I will read my books ahead of that date. I will not read a day or a night to my exam date. You understand what I'm saying, right? That was what helped me. I read ahead of time. Even, even when we, you know, we vacated for the semester, I was reading because I knew I'll be delivered of my baby and that I will go back to school with my newborn baby. I knew that already. So I was reading ahead of time. We had the timetable. So I already knew what I was expecting. So I was reading ahead of time. So if I have days that, you know, day, a day, two, three days ahead, I have to read before the exam. So you have to read ahead of time. Don't say, eh, I have my exam next week, Monday. You start Sunday evening and be, no, you'll be overwhelmed. It will be difficult for you. You might not be able to cope. Yes, you might not be able to cope. So reading ahead is another thing that will help you to cope as a student mom. The next thing I need to tell you is that you have to involve your lecturers. In my last video, I talked about letting your lecturers know that you're pregnant. Have you seen why it is important? Let me tell you what I did. When I was delivered of my baby, I had to call some of my, my lecturers that I, I was able to reach. Yes, I had to call them and inform them so that they would be aware. Yes, I had to call them and tell them that they should help me and thank God though that I've been delivered of my baby and that my baby and I, that we are healthy. I am informing them ahead of time. I had to inform them 
I don't I didn't you know take them by surprise. So they were even expecting me and my baby. In fact, sometimes I used to arrive the exam hall late, but because they already know that I have a, that I'm a nursing mother, you know, they, they, they helped me to an extent. They did not I did not take it for granted, I did not abuse that privilege. But what I'm saying is that when you involve them, it goes a long way, you know, to helping you avoid some things that should be avoided. But when you take them by surprise or you ignore them, they will be looking at you. Another thing you need to do is to buy resource materials and be serious. Yes, not just buy resource materials, you know, it comes in the form of books, it comes in the form of handouts. You have to buy those resource materials. Don't relax and say uh, that you were in class when they were, they were teaching, the lecturer was good, everything is on your head. No, nothing is on your head. Please, you are now a nursing mom, so a lot of things have occupied that space. Yes, so what you have to do is those resource materials that will help you, those books that you've bought, those handouts that you have, they are going to help you. And then you have to be serious. When you are reading, read in such a way that you will assimilate what you are reading and you will understand it. Don't be carried away by your newborn baby and you forget that you have you have exams to write or you have you know lectures to attend. Don't do that, please. It will not help you. The next thing I want to talk to you about is to take care of yourself and your bundle of joy. How do you do that? You don't have to relax and say, eh, because I'm a, I am a student, the workload is too much for me, and you know you abandon yourself. That is not the time for you to now to be you know lazy about and you don't take care of your health. And by your health, I mean your physical health. By your health, I mean taking care of because you still have some you know medication given to you when you were delivered of your baby. Please don't throw them away. You have to take them so that you'll be strong, so that you'll be healthy, so that you'll be strong to take care of your bundle of joy. Yes, as you do all these things that I've mentioned, I assure you, I promise you that you are going to strike a very good balance. You are going to strike a very good balance in taking care of your baby and also being a good wife. Because you have to balance the two. Don't let one suffer because of the other one. It's not going to help you. Please go through this video one more time. Listen to this video. And by the time you articulate the points that I've mentioned, you will agree with me that you can really balance being a wife and a student mom. If this video has made sense to you, please give this video a thumbs up. I want you to share this video because a lot of people need this video. Around the world, we have student moms. They don't even know what to do and what not to do. Please share this video. Comment in the comment section if you have a friend or a sister that was a student mom. Please, you can also tell us what she did in order to, to balance being a wife and a student mom. Then if you yourself was a student mom like, like myself, please let us have your thoughts in the comment section. Probably there were things that I did not mention. You can help us by putting it out there so that people will also learn. Turn on your notification button so that anytime I upload a new video, you will be the first to know. I love you so very much and I will see you in my next video.